chapter 5, and let's begin at verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. I'm reading out of the King James, out of for a draught. And Simon answering said to him, said unto him, Master, we have told all night and we have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both of the ships so that they began to sink. Now that's a lot of fish. <laughs> when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Remember last week we, we talked about Simon, Peter, and Jesus, kind of the same scenario. And Jesus had been resurrected and all this confusion and all this stuff that was taking place in the disciples' lives. And Jesus comes out to the shore. They haven't caught anything, kind of like what happened here. They hadn't caught anything. And Jesus said, throw your net on the other side. And they closed such a great moment. And the Bible, 153 fish, and the nets were so full, they were dragging them in there. This, this was the start and the beginning of where that ended. And I love the fact that, I love the interaction between Jesus and Simon Peter because it, speaks so clear to each one of our life that God works with each of us on an individual basis. The calling of Simon Peter was an amazing call because the first thing that Simon recognized was his inability and Jesus's ability. I mean, they were all astonished. They were, their minds were just exploded. And Simon immediately recognizes that there's something different about this guy. And he says to him, depart from me, for I'm a sinful man. In other words, listen, I can't, I can't hang with you because you're way more than I ever imagined. You're way above me. But Jesus looked at him and said, from this time forward, you will catch men. The Bible said they forsook all and they followed him. I want to preach on this, the three things you need for a good fish tail. Three things you need for a good fish tail. Let's pray. Father, we love you today, and I thank you for the anointing that I feel in this building, the power of the Holy Ghost that is in here right now. Make your abode. Don't just come and be here for a moment and then leave. Linger with us right now, Holy Ghost. Linger in this building. And as you linger, do the work that only you can do. Give me the words to preach and the anointing to preach with. Give them ears to hear what the Spirit has to say. And I give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated today. Thank you for being here. Time has a way of accumulating many, many troubles and problems. Bad experiences have a way of piling up and life becomes cluttered with letdowns and unfulfilled expectations. The more it happens, the easier it gets to accept it. And you know, we talk a lot about expectation. An expectation is too powerful to be wasted on negativity. There are people that have such negative expectations or such a negative outlook on life. But expectation is something that gets you out of problems. It was never meant to keep you in them. You have to fight. You have to push because life is pushy. Life has a certain pressure that the enemy uses to his advantage to hold us in a 
holding pattern of disappointment and unbelief. We know that life can bring us to the edge of uncertainty. You can reach a place in your life and you can question what lies beyond this. What is there in front of me? You can reach a place and wonder, where do I go, where do I go from here? And I don't know how many times I've said this, what is in front of me anything like what I'm going through right now? If it is, then I don't want to go there. Right. You don't have to look far to find disappointment. You don't have to go far to find desperation. Jesus in this story was surrounded by it. He was surrounded by people standing on the shore that their lives were messed up. Their lives were in chaos. Their lives were empty. There was the seasons were standing there preaching to people who they that life had just become routine and mundane, and that's the way it was, and that's the way they thought it was always going to be. But something began to happen, something began to change. As they begin to hear him speak, life began to emerge out of deadness. And you know, the thing is, Jesus longs to do something supernatural in our lives. He isn't just here to be a good good person to cheer us on or just to kind of give us a pep talk and say, hey, you've got what it takes. No, he's here to transform and change and do a supernatural work in our life. Amen. He is here to give us an overflow experience. But I have learned also from experience that many times before Jesus ever does anything, He's waiting for us to make a move. The Bible says, draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. Drawing nigh to God is more than a call for us to come close to him. It is a catalyst for change. It is a catalyst for change. When we begin to draw nigh to God, something begins to happen. Now, there are three tests or three experiences or three things that we have to go through in order to experience an overflow of the supernatural power of God. It starts on the shore. All of those people that were standing on the shore were standing there with Jesus, listening to him teach and listening to him preach. But the Bible says something begins to happen. As they begin to hear him preach, the Bible said they pressed upon him to hear the word of God. In other words, they begin to draw closer. They begin to press upon him. They begin to get close to him. In other words, it's like you see a child and if your child is standing at a distance and you say, hey, you want this cookie? You got to come here. And the, when they begin to see it and they begin to smell what you have, that child begins to come near and presses in upon you. The same thing was happening with Jesus and the people who were standing on the shore. The question is this, where is your hunger and what are you going to do with it? I want to tell you, I am the most hungry I've ever been in my life for the things of God. Yes. And I'm not just going to sit by and say, oh, this is a great feeling to be hungry. No, there's something that we've got to do. We've got to press upon Jesus yes. like we have never pressed upon yes. him before. Yes. Every one of them were lacking what they had been expecting. Everybody standing on that shore had needs in their life of some matter in some way, but hunger causes them to press. There was something stirring and something motivating their desire to press, and it was the word of God that he was preaching. And let me tell you, despite the weight of their problem, they pressed upon him anyway. Despite the enemy fighting them, they pressed upon him anyway. Despite their finances, despite how they felt in their body, despite the outlook look up their life there was something about the word that he yeah, preached yeah, yeah. that they pressed upon him that's why the bible said oh taste and see that the lord he is good they were tasting victory they were tasting hope and they were tasting change See, here's what is Here's what's so exciting as you begin to draw nigh to jesus deliverance begins to happen as we forsake everything that is taking place in our life and focus on one thing, and that is the word of God, chains begin to fall off, vines begin to fall to the ground, and deliverance begins to happen. But here is the phenomenon. As they moved, he moved. The answer we need today is not a natural one. It's in the one. It's found in his presence and it's found in his spirit. He is the God of the overflow. He is the God of more than enough. 
And when you and I press upon him, we will see just how powerful a move of God is. Because I'm going to tell you something, I ain't just here to have good church. And I'm not here just to walk away and say, hey, we had a good time in the presence of God today. I am here to experience an overflow of the presence and the power of God. And if we will press in, we will find that his presence can change anything. And I say this all the time to myself. It's up to you how much you want. Say that to yourself. It's up to me how much I want. Because the amount you press in will determine the level of your change. If you want to stand on the shore and just listen to a good word and feel some goosebumps, you can do that all day long. But if you want real dramatic, dynamic change in your life, you got to press upon him until he begins to move. Because the shoreline does not define who he is and what he can do. He is so much more and he can do so much more. I am ready to press into whatever he has in my life because he is the God of a deeper move. He is a God that is more than anything we have ever experienced in our life. Does anybody want more of him? Does anybody want an overflow experience? But you, you gotta you gotta start on the shore. You got to start with a hunger. You got to start with a spark. You got to start with something that engages you to step into something deeper than you've ever experienced in your life. The next step or the next experience happened when they pressed upon him. Because the Bible says as they pressed upon him, he began to move. And he got into a boat. And the Bible said he pressed out into the shallows. The crowds pushed him to get into a boat. It was Simon's boat. The Bible said the boat was empty. Let me ask you a question. What does you and your boat have in common? Anybody, anybody row on a little boat? You know, some of you pushing a wagon. I'm pulling the wagon. So it feels like me, I'm pushing my wagon. But... What do you and your boat have in common? You know, I find it interesting. I know God does not work in coincidence, but there were two boats sitting there and Jesus picked Simon's boat. Nobody was in the boats. How do you know it was Simon's boat? But he chose Simon's boat. Simon was the hardest one to get through. If he could convince Simon, he had the rest of them. Yeah. Simon was a leader. And Jesus knew he was. So if he could get him, he had the rest of them. Because who, in the previous message we preached, who said I was going fishing? Peter. What did the rest of them do? We'll go with you. He was a leader. But Jesus picked his boat. You know something interesting? This is what the Lord highlighted something to me. He chooses what problems to fix and when to fix them. You ever notice that? You ever notice if you're praying about this over here and this over here happens? Like, you know, that, that's, that's great and all, but I really want you to do this. But it's true. He picks and chooses what he does. And the test of the shallow waters is this. Do you have the patience to let Jesus fix them all? Yeah. See, patience is more than just a valuable virtue. And I know, you know, and I don't know why we still talk about this after 30 years. You know, patience, everybody goes, oh, patience. Patience is part of the process that works with the word of God to produce a promise. I want to read you this in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. This is what he says. For ye have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. You get that? For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God you might receive the promise. This is the, this is the, this is the second thing you need for an overflow experience. You need patience. You know what doing his will is? It's sitting in the boat until the lesson's over. Simon had to sit there and listen to Jesus finish preaching 
before anybody went out any further. You know, there are moments in every one of our lives that the only thing that we've got to hold on to at the moment is the word of God, the promise that he's spoken yes. to your life. Because there are times you don't see anything happening. There may be even times you see things going in reverse instead of going forward. The one thing that you have to learn to do is to sit there in the boat and hold on to that word until something begins to break and something begins to happen. Amen. But here's the reward of patience. The Bible said you inherit the promise. Yes. What is that promise? It is a deep net breaking experience that is out in front of your patience. So Jesus is teaching them on the shore and as they begin to move and their hunger begins to move, he, he looks around and says, wait a second, I, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta move here. He gets in a boat and he pushes out from the land and the guys are up on the shore the fishermen are out there washing their nets. Now, back in that time, those, these nets that they were throwing out in the water were massive nets. To wash those nets was work, whether they were full or whether they were empty. It was more work if it was empty. But what is more work? Washing empty nets or wondering why they're empty? Or be impatient when you don't know what is going to happen next? I want to tell you something. This life that we're living is work sometimes. There are days I get up and Sister Pam, I've got to work. I've got to work on stuff. I've got to work on me. I've got to work on what's happening. I've got to deal with this and deal with that and all this stuff going on. And there are times it's like, oh, I'm just floating out across the, the lake and everything's wonderful. And there are moments, storms, you know, you know how it is. Every one of us deal with that. But I want to read you something else. Go to James chapter 1. My brother counted all joy. When you fall into divers temptations, or let me, let me read it to you like this. My brother counted all joy when you got to work harder than you was expecting to work. Amen. Count it all joy when you come dragging your net in and need a fish one in the net. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her. Oh, wow. What a revelation about that. Patience is a woman. Patience is a female. <laughs> Just like wisdom is a female. But let patience have her perfect work. That you may be perfect and entire. Wanting nothing. God has something in the works right now that you and I can't see. So we got to be patient. The shallows are a test of your faith to produce patience so you can be ready for what is about to happen not far from right now. Y'all must still be reading your Bible. Listen to what the Lord just said. The shallows are a test. I say the Lord said this because I didn't write this down. He told me to write it. The shallows are a test of your faith to produce patience so that you can be ready for what is about to happen not far from now. Your patience is not just about how much you can take. It's also about how long can you wait. Because the wait is going to be worth it. You waited this long. Endure it and keep waiting because not far from now, you don't have any idea. You're about to go out into a place that you're going to put down an empty net and you're going to wonder, am I going to be able to get this thing back to shore or not? Because it's so full of an overflow from God. See, your patience is linked to a move of the Holy Ghost. That will not leave you disappointed. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 verses 3 through 5. That we are not be that hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is poured out upon us by the Holy Ghost. In other words hope does not disappoint us. But patience has a work in that. Let's read this. Romans chapter 5 verse 3. I want you to get this because I think it's important. I'm trying to get you ready for what's about to happen here. Let's just start at verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. 
And not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Also known that tribulation works patience. And patience, experience, and experience hope. And hope does not make us shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost, which was given unto us for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. What are you saying, Pastor? The word you listen to at this season is going to test you, but will also change your future moving forward. Right now, there's some of you that are wondering, why is your net so empty? You're wondering why. You have to clean this junk out of the net. And day after day after day, you're not getting anything. But God said, your patience is going to pay off because there's something that's going to go that's going to happen a call is going to come forth in your life that Jesus is going to look at you and say launch out there's going to come a moment that is going to shift everything when Jesus looks at you and says now it's time to experience the overflow I want to tell some of you today you have passed the test of the shallows thank you Lord yes this is what the Holy Ghost told me to tell you. You have passed the test of the shallows. There are some of you that have been waiting. You've been faithful in your patience. You've been faithful in your waiting. And it's made you a better person. And Jesus Christ is ready to say to you, come on, let's go out here in the deep and let's reap the rewards of your patience and your faith. God is coming. It's not far, church. It's not far. You have passed the test of the shallows, and God is inviting you to see and experience what you have never seen before. Simon Peter had never seen anything like what was about to happen to him. See, this is the moment for faith to look for greater things. Faith can sustain you. Faith can keep you going. Faith can keep you bobbing up above the water. But there comes a time when faith looks for greater things. Launch out into the deep. Launch out into the deep. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, the Bible said, Darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now, this is water like no other. The word deep in that text means abyss, which is defined as a surging mass of water. I mean, it was just chaotic. But there's only one who could work in a situation like this. The Bible said, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. The spirit of God moved. Upon the face of the water. The Son of God was sitting in the boat with Simon Peter. And he said, let me take you to a place you're unfamiliar with. But I'm not. Uh, <laughs> let me take you to a place that you would never expect this kind of blessing. Let me take you to a place that you've never been before. But I'm very familiar with it. Yes. The deep became a place of miracles that Simon Peter had never seen in his life. But you've got to launch out. The last test was the strangest thing Simon Peter had ever encountered in his life. You know what? I've, I've got to the point to where I am expecting the unusual. You know, Simon and Peter that were fishing that night, the, the conditions were probably favorable. They were, if they were fishing, the conditions were favorable. The timing was right. It was nighttime. That's when they fished. They put lights on their boats all around. It drew the fish to the top, and they threw the nets out. And, I mean, the timing was perfect. It was right. But the circumstance wasn't good. You ever had a moment that everything, even the timing was right, but your problem was still stayed the same? Hey, I've said to God many times, Lord, this would be the perfect time for you to do this. Yeah. It's just right. Come on, you. Yeah. This kind of stuff you like to do right here. <laughs> Go ahead. Any moment, just do it. No, it didn't happen like that. And Jesus says to Simon, he says, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a draw. For a draw. And, and Simon points this out to Jesus. He said, hold on a second, Mr. Carpenter. You don't know what you're talking about. 
First of all, he said, we are exhausted. He said, we have toiled. The word toil is exhausted. We have, we are exhausted. Excuse me. He said, because we have fished all night. In other words, Simon said, hey, let me, let me just tell you, I know everything there is to know about fishing. And this is not it. Jesus said, let down your net for a draught. The reason why I'm preaching out the King James Version today because I like the word draught. The word draught in Hebrew, which you don't see this translated very often, means a haul. Now, if you want a drop, you can get a drop. But if you want a haul, you can get a haul. Now, if somebody says to me, man, I tell you what, they went there and they got a haul. If you're Southern, you know that means they got a whole bunch. And this is what Jesus said. He said, listen, launch out in the deep. And if you want a whole bunch, he said, you can have it. In other words, Jesus said, Simon, whatever you can do, I can do better. Yeah. Remember that old song? Yeah. Whatever you can do, I can do better. Yeah, that's what Jesus is saying to Simon Peter. He said, listen, he said, I know you're the expert. And I know you know just how your life ought to go. I know you know how everything ought to be. He said, but let me show you something you don't know. I am the God who Amen. made the fish. I am the God who made the ocean. I am the God of the overflow. Let me show you what I can do. And here's the thing. We have to get beyond this idea that it all has to make sense in order for it to be God. I am so sick of theologians telling me that this has got to be just like this and just like this and just like this. Here's the thing. What separates him from everything and everyone else is his power and ability to do whatever he says. Now, I can stand here all day long and say, a blue ball appear, and it ain't going to happen. But if Jesus stood here and said, blue ball appear, boom, there's going to be the blue ball. That's what makes him different from anything and everyone else. It doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to go the way it's always been. All he's got to do is show up and dare somebody. And if you want a haul of fish, don't sit there and question the timing. Get the net out and go out there and throw the net in the water. He's asking you, do you want to catch fish when the timing's all wrong? Just go get your net. Just go get that net. The Lord said, your test is about to transition to an overflow and a breakthrough. Wow. This is not a time for, I'll never do it. This is a time for, nevertheless. I've heard people say, I've seen people in church fall down on their face and pray and worship. And I've heard people say, you'll never catch me doing that. Then be happy with your fish. I want fishes. I want a haul. H A U L A Hall. See, he's not confined to working within the limits of your timing. That's right. He don't dwell in time. He can't be affected by circumstances. He operates within his word. And if his word has no limits, then we should be at this point where we say, nevertheless, at your word. <laughs> at your word because I don't know what you're doing right now all I know is I've been sitting in this boat listening to you talk to those people on the shore and there's something stirring inside of me that says wait a second maybe there's something to this guy maybe there's something about him that I really don't the thing of it is Simon Peter really didn't even know him Simon Peter had only met Jesus a couple of times. One was when Nathaniel said, come see a man who is the Messiah. And Philip went and told Peter and Peter came. And then another time he's at the house of Peter and Peter's mother-in-law sick. And he prays for the mother-in-law. 
and Jesus sits outside the door of the house and heals every person in the whole entire town or whoever's sick and demonic and he heals them all. But they're not hanging out. Jesus doing whatever over here. Simon, he's out here doing what he's done ever since he's a little boy. He's fishing. Simon doesn't even know him. But there was something about the test of patience. Let me tell you something. If you really want to learn to know God, you'll do it when you're patient. Simon says, nevertheless, at your word. In other words, this don't make no sense to me. I don't know what you're doing. You ain't never fished in your life. I know everything about it. And you don't know a thing, but I'm going to do it anyway. Right. Yeah. This one act of obedience changed the entire dynamic of Simon's faith. Remember, like I said, he barely knew him at this point. But just gives us a great example that we don't have to know it all to see change happen. We just have to believe. See, something was happening in the supernatural that was about to spill over into the natural. All Simon could see what was in front of him, and that was the natural. What he couldn't see was what Jesus was doing behind the scenes. Nothing could stop it. They threw that net out. The Bible said, and after they had thrown the net out, something began to happen. They began to look and say, whoa, whoa, wait a second. There's something in that net. And as they, the Bible said, begin to pull on those nets and they begin to draw those nets up. They looked and said, hold on a second, we're in trouble because these nets are starting to break. These nets are starting to snap. They haul around across the sea. Hey, Simon, hey, uh, James, John, get your boat over here because we're about to lose the biggest haul of fish we have ever seen in our life. Something supernatural was happening. This isn't the shore. This isn't the shallow. This is the deep and powerful things are happening in the deep. If you're willing to launch out with Jesus Christ and talk, yes. stay attached to his word and know that you will not be disappointed and you will not be left empty when you throw your net out in the deep. So I encourage you today, take down that net that you've hung up to dry and drag it back out to the deep because I've got a sinking feeling that something is going to happen in your boat that is going to spill over into the rest of your life. A blessing that is more than you're able to receive. Shut the whole shot because the test has not been for nothing. The test that you've gone through, the test that this church has went through we have been patient. Let me tell you something. If I was to write down every prophetic word about this church, there are words that were spoke about this church that none of you ever know. You don't even know. I've never told you. I could fill this book with them. It's not a whole, that's it's quite a few pages. People that don't know me, people that don't know this church have spoken prophetic words over this church. And we have been patient. You've been patient. Thank you for being patient. Because some of you could have packed up a long time ago and said, there ain't nothing happening here. We're going somewhere else. We're... But you didn't. Thank you. But God's going to reward us for our patience. Yes. Because see, you have to press. You have to be patient. You have to be patient. And you got to be willing to go out into the deep when everything's not perfect. Because we serve a God of the overflow. Yeah. You got to press, you got to be patient, and you got to be persistent. <laughs> Nets. I remember years ago, my wife just showed me a picture the other day. This is not long before I think uh, her grandpa died, or around that so close to it. We're all down in Florida. If anybody ever I know, Mike, you know about cast net fishing. Maybe some of y'all know about it, too. My wife's grandpa 
had several different cast nets, but he preferred the big one. And if you grab the small one, he'd make fun of you. He always called me a girl. I don't know why he did that. Was, he, had, he had pet names for me when he thought I was being a coward. And uh, he taught me how to throw that cast net. And that net is heavy. The big one is. It's got weights on the bottom of it, and you know you have to fan it out just right to get it to lay out so that when it comes down, it, it encloses those fish. I've never had a moment to where I was ever in trouble with pulling the net in, maybe throwing it out, but never pulling it in. Because I never seem to catch much, even with the net. Can you imagine the surprise of Simon Peter? Because as far as I know, it's just him and Jesus sitting in that boat. And Simon takes that big heavy net that takes several men to throw out. And he's working that net over the side of that boat, just working at it and working at it. Trying to get it to fan out where it's going to fall down. And Simon's looking, thinking, oh, man, this ain't right. This is not right. This is the timing. Everything is off. It's daytime, and we don't fish in the day. It's deep waters. We don't fish in deep waters. We'd have been in the shallows. That'd have been perfect. But this is not. But to his surprise, when he began to pull up on the strings, he's like, Oh, whoa, 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 wait a second, wait a second. He began to pull and he began to notice this thing is so full of fish. And he falls down at the feet of Jesus and he says, depart from me. For I am a sinful man. I want to tell you something. None of us deserve what's going to happen. I don't. I don't deserve what God is going to do through this church. Does he reward patience? Yes, he does. But can I say I deserve it? I can't say I do. But what God is going to do through this church is going to amaze it. Not only everyone in this building, but everyone who comes in contact with this church. Yes, amen. Because something's going to happen one day to you, wherever you may be, wherever, whatever's going on, you're going to start pulling on the strings of that net. And you're not going to expect a whole lot because everything doesn't seem right. But all of a sudden, you're going to look and say, wait a second, we got a problem here. We got a good problem. James, John, get your boat over here. We need some help over here because we're going to lose this thing if we don't get some help. Come on. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So here's what I want you to pray for. I'm closing. Here's what I want you to pray for. I want you to pray God will send this church help. Yes. Would you do that? Would you pray, God, send us more help? Because what's going to happen in this church is going to need more than just us to get it done. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 God is taking us into a deep move of his spirit. He's taking us into a deep move of his power. He's taking us further than we've ever gone before and we're about to see things we've never seen in our life. There are things you've been prophesied to that you thought were outlandish and thought there is no way that'll ever happen in my lifetime. I dare you get your net out and say, nevertheless, Jesus, whatever you say, that's what I'm going to do because I'm expecting this. Let's stand together today. I am expecting a move of God like we have never seen in our lifetime. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, don't take a getting a Republican in the presidency to make it happen. It takes you and I being willing to say, okay, Jesus, I trust what you say. I know it don't make sense. I know it goes against everything that I've ever done, but I trust you. Because I've sat in the boat listening to what you said. Get in his word, church. Get in his word. Hunger for his word. Hunger for the things that he has to say. And be willing to go where he wants you to go so that you can experience that overflow blessing. Oh, is anybody ready for that overflow blessing? 
Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Would you lift your hands with me right now? I want you to pray this prayer. Say, Father, send this church more help so that we can handle the overflow that is coming. Hallelujah. Father, I praise you, my Lord and my God. Lord, send us more help so that, Lord, we can...